All right, next up we have our very special guest, Mr. John Willis. We're going to give him a hand. You can grab the mic from Dave. So a question for you. What is your favorite guitar riff to play? Oh, geez. Um, well, if I could, it would be a Stevie Ray Vaughan one, but I'm just not that good. <laughs> All right. All right, just goes out to Jeff. I'm too old to do Ignites, so just, anyway. All right, Investments Unlimited. Um, it, basically, the story of the making of the book, and we had uh, nine uh, authors, and from Disney to um, PNC Bank, to, and um, the three people probably most responsible for this is a conversation that started probably eight, nine years ago with Topo Pal, um, John Rezatowski at PNC, and myself, about audit and how audit was just a mess in the industry, and IT Resc, just doesn't connect. So it started in 2015 with um, a paper that a bunch of us wrote called An Unlikely Union DevOps and Audit. And then we wrote a tongue-in-cheek Dear Audit. This is, these are all out there in Creative Commons. And in 2019, we wrote this sort of pivotal paper about how to do this. Um, the Dear Auditor was interesting in that um, it was sort of a tongue-in-cheek apology letter to orders, but it actually has about 53 concrete risk controls that we would, we decided we would sort of honor and make it better. And like I said, in 2019, we sat down and we tried to create a reference architecture. And the goal was to increase the efficacy of audit and reduce the toil, right? And, and do that through digitally signed immutable attestations, right? Um, and, and that book has been useful. And so what we did is we sat down, and it was another group of just phenomenal people in the industry. We decided there were seven stages that you had to identify to do gating and, um, and sort of attestational evidence. And so we created a model in each stage. And these are some of the examples that were originally used. And they, the thing was, this was a holistic approach. It wasn't just about like, um, you know, um, dependencies and vulnerabilities in software, things like test coverage, change size, cyclomatic complexity, appearing on a pull request. In the build stage, things like linting, obviously SAS, but versions, your configuration. Uh, again, I think one of the things in our industry is we get myopic on just sort of the, the vulnerabilities in software. But a bad configuration item can destroy your organization just as quick as a, um, a Struts 2 vulnerability. And then in a package stage, like image siding. In fact, the uh, SolarWinds was an example. I, I, I spoke to the SolarWinds execs, and they had no, um, they weren't signing images. So they were producing artifacts that they couldn't even tell were uh, manipulated. And so in your pre-pod, uh, I mean, sorry, pre-pod stage, you could, and, and, and production stage, sorry, um, prove configuration, threat monitoring. So the point is you can put all these things in. And the idea that we came up with uh, sort of in the second version is, what if we could put a DSL, sort of a risk is code, everybody talks about policy is code, but a risk is code to get the auditors and IT risk on the same page as the developers. And um, so the story evolves as a book about an investment company, a 20 billion market cap, and um, basically they were doing really good at DevOps. And then they get, basically, which is an audit a failure, which is MRIA, and, and basically the CEO's like, I thought we were doing good at DevOps. And like, yeah, but not on security. And so we, we did a sort of a um, Phoenix project model where we had, uh, if you, you know, the Bill Eric uh, combination, we had a Jason Bill this sort of dialogue, uh, Socratic dialogue, where they learn. And one of the best lines in the book is, um, you know, this Jason character says, your DevOps has failed you. And they're like, what do you mean by that? And then it starts this evolving concept about, like, hey, they really weren't helping the orders. So they put a project together. The CEO gets everybody on the same page. And, and the first thing they do is they look. They have these MRAs, matters requiring uh, actions. And they had 15 outstanding right, before they were going to get this MRIA. And what's funny, like, as we're halfway through this paper, um, the, the Mitsubishi Financials gets a cease and desist from the OCC, which is basically, they had 15 MRAs outstanding for 18, 18 months, and they literally got shut down, right? So, like, fiction, uh, real life and fiction actually happens. So the, the moral of the story, if you read it, is it's their learning how to sort of address these MRAs. Like, you know, enforcing peer reviews, identifying quality gates, removing elevated access. And then another part of it was interesting too is it was trying to explain, as Jason explained, say, that you can live with the three lines of defense, but you just have to think about it differently. 
And, and I think a lot of people use the three lines defense to sort of segregate the groups. And in the end of the story, like, I think it's awesome, is they finally put this whole thing together. They put a software solution. And it's actually work based on a bank that built this. And they demo it to everybody, and everybody's like, big deal. And then they realize, okay, let's do one where it actually shows a failure. And, and in the failure one, everybody's like, ah, I get it. You know, and uh, so it was the actual failure, that, so the checksum in this case, that's like, oh, now I get why this thing could work. Anyway, that's a really short version of a book, but, uh, but um, yeah, we'll be signing them later today, and, um, and I hope you enjoy it. I think one last thing, I know I'm out of time, but I think this book is going to be the Phoenix Project for security, right? And not because I wrote it or like anything. It's the book you're going to be able to hand to your boss, just like the Phoenix Project, say, read this book. Instead of me trying to explain for weeks and months why we need to do this, read this book, and at that point, the, your leaders and managers will come back and say, I get it. So anyway, thank you. All right. Thank you, John. All right. Big hand for John and for all of our Ignite speakers today.